Hey guys, welcome back to Detective D, the Silk Rose Murders. In the last episode, we took a look at the crime scene, and we couldn't really uncover stuff, but we made some deductions. And also, we have this medallion that Zhao Bao, uh, who is the little boy at the crime scene, at the victim's house, uh, wanted from us so he would actually talk. So we're gonna talk to him right now. Straight away. Did you find my medallion? Well, I did. Here you go. My medallion, you found it! Thank you, Officer D. A promise is a prom- uh, uh, Sorry. <laughs> a promise is a promise. Now, Zhao Bao, can you tell me what Liu Zilin wanted from you? Well, after you took my medallion, he told me I had to keep watch in the neighborhood for him or else that he wouldn't return it. He said there are criminals everywhere and that I had to spy on them, but I wasn't allowed to talk to anyone about it. Did he tell you why you had to do that? He said he wanted me to tell to help him catch people doing bad things. He said this area was known for its gangsters and ruffians and that he needed someone like me to keep an eye on them. He came to see me every week to ask me about what I saw or heard, but every time he refused to give me back my medallion. I see. He was using you as an informant. Did he ask you to spy on Julien uh, Fay? No, he never asked me to do that. I... I did that on my own. On your own? Fei Fei was a friend. I was worried about her. How well did you know her? We became friends not long after she moved here. She was kind to me. She used to buy steamed buns from the market, the fresh kind, you know? She would share some with me all the time. At first I said I couldn't accept them because I didn't have any money, but she said it was a gift. She even liked, uh, liked my little statuettes. It's a hobby of mine, I carve them out of small pieces of wood. She was the only one who ever liked them. But Fei Fei was all alone, and she had to take care of her father, so I tried to help. How did you help? I came over all the time to watch over the house. I wanted to protect her and make sure she was safe. So you were here on the night she was killed? I... I'm useless. <laughs> I wanted to guard her from danger. And now she's dead. It's not too late to help your friend. If you witnessed something, now's the time to speak up. Tell me what you saw on the night of the murder. I was coming over to visit Fei Fei. I wanted to show her my new wooden statuette. But when I arrived, I saw someone walking out of the house. I was hiding there, but the fence, like I always do. But it was too dark, I couldn't see who it was. As he passed by, I thought of the evil spirit from my nightmares. I was too afraid to do anything. I... I just ran away. It was only later that I found out that Fei, Fei was murdered. He was right there. The killer was right there, and I did nothing. I should have done something. Can you describe the stranger? It was dark. I couldn't see his face, but he was tall and moved very fast, almost as if he was gliding. Did you see what he was wearing? He was black all over, like some sort of shadow. He didn't even seem to have any legs. Was Zhu Dan the stranger? Mr. Zhu? No, sir. The person I saw was tall and fast. Mr. Zhu can barely walk without his stick. It couldn't have been him. Besides, Mr. Zhu loved Fei Fei. He'd been so happy since he returned. Uh, since she, since her return, he would never hurt her. Don't blame yourself for what happened, Zhao Bao. Take, uh, take solace in the fact that your testimony will help free Zhu Dan. Were you spying on me earlier? I wasn't spying on you, sir. I've been coming here every day since Fei Fei died. I just wanted... I guess I wanted to say goodbye. Then Lu, uh, when Liu Zeilin came here to investigate the crime scene, did you tell him what you saw? No, sir. I tried to speak to him, but he kept telling me to leave. He said there were too many people around. I didn't know who else to talk to, so I waited for him to come back. But he never did. You've done well, Zhao Bao. Thank you. Black from head to toe. Gliding across the darkness, the killer could have been wearing a long black cloak. 
Although the evidence doesn't point us towards a new sus suspect, we can at least prove that Zhu Dan is innocent. I should speak to the Empress. Oh, investigation complete already! Uh, collected Zhao Bao's eyewitness account of an unknown person leaving the house. Alright, so a dear warning as an achievement unlocked too. There's no time to waste. I should uh, go speak to the Empress instead. So we are going to do that. So this might be a short episode it seems, guys. Hmm. Can we talk to her once again? Okay, so we are supposed to just talk to the Empress. So we're just gonna do that, I guess. You've an expression of relief on your face, Magistrate. I express, uh, I expect you bring good news. Yes, Your Majesty. My investigation has indeed shed new light on the matter of Zhu Lanfei's death. In that case, tell your tale. I do not wish to be kept in suspense for another moment. Case reenactment. Whoever killed Zhu Lin Fei did so with ruthless premeditation. He stalked his prey with patience and purpose. He knew their routines, their habits, he knew their weaknesses. He was aware of Zhu Dan's customary visits to the waterfront for late afternoon tea. He familiarized himself with Zhu Lin Fei's schedule and knew when she, she, when she would return from the temple she often visited. He obtained this knowledge by... Uh, spying on them because he was standing here, right? For days, maybe even weeks, the killer followed and observed these Jews. At night, he stood by this very window. Still and silent, he demonstrated an obsessive dedication. In the state, darkness and rain were his allies. Zhu Dan could not have killed Zhu Lin Fei because earlier that evening he, his walking stick was stolen by a man who knew his and his daughter's every move. Once he had left Zhu Dan stranded, the killer made his way here to await Zhu Lin Fei's arrival. But upon entering the house and seeing the cloaked stranger, the young woman did not flee. Astonishingly, she stood where he asked and did, did as he ordered. The killer accomplished this by Hmm, using the threat of violence, well, black, I guess blackmailing her, right? No, we, we, of course, he, well, we already had that, he, he broke the walking stick, that's what happened. And that's also kind of blackmail, but whatever. By now, the killer knew the Jews intimate, intimately. By breaking the walking stick, he was sending a chilling message. Unseen and unheard, he could get to them any time he wanted. Zhu Lin Fei chose not to fight and risk her father's safety. If it, was her, uh, if it was her the killer wanted, she was willing to sacrifice herself for a chance to save her father. Zhu Lin Fei understood the threat and she willingly sacrificed herself for a chance to save her father. The killing of Zhu Lin Fei was a calculated move, but I fear it is only the first of many. I believe our killer is only at the beginning of his grand vision. It wasn't enough for him to taunt us by leaving a rose, or even by taking his victim's heart. He wanted us to know precisely that his journey of destruction had just begun. The note he left behind was designed to be a warning. The time is near, slaves will lose heart, the wall signifies fear of flesh torn apart. This is definitely a warning. It is also a poem, but one with a deeper meaning, which is a warning. It's not a ransom. In this note, he speaks of a wolf on the prowl, of slaves losing their hearts. In his mind, for reasons we have yet to understand, 
Zhu Linfei was one of these slaves. He is warning us that more victims are to come. Afterwards, If what you say is true, Julian Fei remained strong and selfless until the very end. How many of us would have the courage for such self-sacrifice? On the other hand, it seems we are facing a menace beyond what I had imagined. I'm afraid so, your majesty. This predator will not cease until his plan has come to fruition, or until we stop him. I intend to... Your majesty! Majesty, I have news from a night watchman in the central quarter. A woman, another woman was murdered in her own home just one hour ago. So it is true, a predator is indeed among us. What else have you learned? Not much at the moment, only that she was the newly wedded wife of Lam Hei Feng, the late General, Le the late General Lam's son. One and the same, Your Majesty. General Lam should have been a strong supporter of your regime had he not succumbed to uh, pneumonia last winter. His only son, Lam Hei Feng, was also a gifted army captain who still commands the loyalty of his father's troops. Yes, I recall hearing of this abrupt wedding of last month. He retired from his official post and walked to lead the life of a civilian. And now his wife has been murdered? There is no more, your majesty. According to my sources, the treasonous General Zhang has recently courted Lam Haifeng's allegiance. Zhang is no doubt attempting to strengthen his rebellious coalition. Could it be that... That Zhang is trying to terrorize the young captain into obedience? That thought has crossed my mind. But if that is true, Zhang is even more despicable than I gave him credit for. Killing innocents is a line he will regret crossing. If I may interject, your majesty, I think we should proceed carefully and avoid jumping to conclusions. If we are wrong about General Zhang's involvement and accuse him openly, that could give your position an excuse to unite and start a civil war. Allow me to investigate the matter. If a thread is to be found that connects the killing of these two women to a plot against you, then I will find it. On the other hand, if this killer is but a single, deranged man, we must not lose sight of his trail by chasing conspiracy theories. You are right, Magistrate D. We need evidence. We must remember the stakes before we place our bets. You will go to the Lam residence, investigate what's happened to Lam Hei Feng's wife, and report back with whatever ties you find between her, Zhu Lin Fei, and General Zhang. If Zhang is indeed involved in any of it, he will pay dearly for his brazen treachery. Yes, Your Majesty. Well, 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 it seems like we have opened a new chapter. Chapter 2. But guys, I'm really sorry. We'll have to do this on the next episode because, well, you know, dividing this into chapters is just better. So if you want to know what chapter 2 is all about, you'll have to tune in next time for Detective D. The Silk Cross Murders. See you then.